Aloha, this is Kat. I just returned from my grandmother's shower, and boy, was it a lot of fun. Uh, so I'm going to sit down and tell you about it, and uh, what a great idea that is for a woman that's becoming a grandmother for the first time. A uh, shower. Wow. Who'd ever thought? Anyway, um, I just wanted to show you that I wore uh, an outfit. I don't normally get dressed up during the day because... Uh, caring for the animals at the cat sanctuary usually has me in kind of a jeans and a t-shirt. So it was really fun to get dressed up. Um, one of the things, as you can see, is one cat. Uh, when I was, um, where we had the luncheon was at a wonderful lodge, a very big old lodge. And, uh, the owner of the lodge is a friend of mine, and so uh, she attended the lodge. And she has a resident senior cat that resides outside who greets the guests and is never inside the restaurant. But um, lo and behold, if we didn't turn around and the cat was right behind me and, and we were far over in one corner of the, the restaurant so uh, the cat had to work its way over there and <laughs> so it was kind of humorous. Everybody said, okay, wherever cat is, a cat follows. So, um, and the owner said, that has never happened before. The cat's never been inside and doesn't, isn't allowed inside to be in the restaurant. Um, when I was a little kid uh, in school, uh, there was a dog that was outside in the schoolyard and we had the doors open because it was one of those classrooms where you, you had outside and then the classroom and then another door. And the dog came in and curled up under my desk. And then the teacher came by because I didn't say anything. And so a teacher came by and said, this is, did you bring your dog from home? I said, no, it's not my dog. It just was out in the playground and somehow, and I hadn't petted it outside or anything. I hadn't seen anything. It just kind of went from the playground and came right in and under my desk. It was just kind of interesting to have that happen uh, today. But I'm going to sit down and tell you about um, how wonderful it was to uh, have a grandmother's shower. So, about my shower. First of all, I have Princess here on my lap, and the Princess loves massages, and so she's used to always getting a massage from me. And maybe one day I'll show you. I'm a licensed massage therapist, and, and I've taken what I used to do for humans and put it on the kitties, and uh, they love it, and it's a great way of, uh, of checking to see that they're okay, too. Anyway, I'm back to the shower. So um, there were about 14 of us. And uh, while I asked not to have any gifts brought other than the gift of sharing their stories of the grandmothers and, uh, and either of being a grandmother or of, of uh, the memory of their grandmother, uh, they did bring some gifts. Anyway, but it was, it was really wonderful. But some of the things that I learned, which was very odd uh, to think of, is that the majority of them never knew their grandmothers. Their grandmothers had all died before they were born or shortly after when they were just one or two. So it kind of speaks to um, kind of the, the longevity that uh, our grandparents had uh, versus like what we are now. And I just think, you know, because they used to have children younger. And so some of these to have lost their grandparents in their 40s and 50s or so just struck me as strange. Also, there were only two of us there that were mothers and consequently grandmothers. There was a, another woman there that had ten grandchildren and then all the rest had uh, uh, never had children. You know, they were married and, and opted not to have children. And when I, you know, and there was a, a couple of ladies are uh, couples themselves and so, um, but chose never to, you know, um, have children. So, uh, but it was just interesting to realize that, you know, having been a Mormon, uh, and everybody was a mother and a grandmother, and you had multiple times, and you were a mother by your time you were 20, 21, and your grandmother by the time you were uh, 40, and just to realize that um, not very many people do that. Now, my one friend who was there who uh, had a baby, oh, so there was three, there's three mothers. My one friend who's there, who's uh, 49, she had a baby two years ago. So she was, you know, had her first baby at 47, which is kind of unusual. Anyway, we ha had a little bit of a, a 
the little drama uh, as she was getting ready to leave because he was starting to get a little um, more active and she didn't want to ruin the um, opening of all the presents and the sharing of all the stories. So she said, I'm going to leave and, and uh, she had given him the keys to play with. And, and then uh, when she turned to get him, he said, he's gone and he had found the one puka in the open window, of the old-fashioned window, uh, that had a little tiny hole in it and dropped her car and house and all of her keys into this little puka that went down and was forever gone. Um, and the lodge people, everybody tried to get him and could not. So one thing I learned as, a, um, as, to, as far as a grandmother, don't give... <laughs> a two-year-old your keys to occupy them. Uh, even if it appears like it's a very uh, impossible way for him to lose them. We went through the whole wall and all, there was like eight windows and not one other window had a little puka in it that he could possibly drop down the keys. So you talk about um, things converging on this one. So um, yeah, if that's one thing I did learn. Um, I had also wonderful things that they shared um, for the few that didn't remember their grandmothers. As far as having a book, uh, all the uh, fairy tales and that, that when they'd go visit grandma, that grandma would read the fairy tales. Those were all the grim fairy tales. And, uh, you know, I, some of those are the most terrifying fairy tales ever. I mean, when we think about what we put our kids in and, you know, and even the nursery rhymes and all those, that's just so scary. So I'm going to have to look for a softer, gentler fairy tales. Um, you know, that aren't, you know, that, you know, even the, the lullabies we sing are, rock a bye baby in the treetops, the cradle, the cradle, the cradle, you know, down woke up baby, cradle and all, I mean, oh, horrible songs. Oh. So anyway, but, so that, but that gave me an idea, uh, that I'm going to have, look for wonderful, soft, loving fairy tales, or if I can't find it, I guess I'm going to have to write my own. So. Um, that's one thing. Another one was um, a woman who said that when she would go visit her grandmother, that they would always do their nails. So isn't that fun? Like, okay, that's what you do. And I'm going to have two twin twin girls. That would be really cool to... Okay, we're going to go see Grandma, and Grandma's going to um, do our nails. Or we're going to, you know, or that. So anyway, I thought that was fun to think about that dress up. Uh, another one was that, um, uh, you know, as far, hmm, that's it. <laughs> I think there was only like, oh, oh, the one that really touched me was the, the grandmother of 10. She said that when her, her first grandchild, she went there and visited and she said for, for the first three days, she'd be there, you know, mother sleeping and she'd just stare at the baby, just stare, a look look at look at the soul level of the baby and just formed this wonderful connection with her granddaughter and she says it was three days and i i bet you it was hours hours each day that i would just just get lost in looking at this baby um uh, something i never she could never do when she was actually the mother because the mother you're either too tired or something but as a grandmother she said and to this day, they have um, the most wonderful connection. It was her first um, grandchild, and she's 21 now. And she says it's like they made this connection. So I thought that was really uh, beautiful and uh, told me how to start looking at how you bond with them from the beginning. And, and she says, you know, just telling him that I love you unconditionally. I got uh, two or three of them that said that while they never, ever felt that way from their mother. They felt that their grandmother loved them unconditionally. And I thought that was beautiful. Uh, that to, to just to have, to hold a space of unconditional love. I really love that. Anyway, um, if you know of somebody that's expecting their first grandchild, consider a grand, grand, grandmother shower. And uh, kind of, and some of the wonderful things I got. One friend gave me a certificate for a manicure and a pedicure. Uh, another one gave me a certificate for a facial. 
uh, another one, and a, a gift certificate for uh, dinner for two. Uh, we got a couple of bottles of wine for my husband and myself. I got some um, a, a painting, and uh, I got uh, some one to make ceramic handprints for the the girls so that we could put their handprints in there. Um, I got some lotions and rubs, um, stuff like that to smell good. Uh, and the one was because my daughter-in-law's decorating her um, the, the nursery in pink pigs, flying pigs, and uh, pigs and polka dots. And so one gave a whole bunch of all pig-related items, pig spatulas, pig cutting, uh, cookie cutters to make, and uh, everything piggy. And it was really, really cute. I got some of the two, and also... Uh, two of the cutest pairs of socks and I'll have to show that and afterwards I'll add that on because they're so cute because they're cat socks really adorable um, and um, oh and then uh, people would write out had written out the story of their grandparents and so we went around the table as I opened the present and read their card and then asked them to share their story and then um, at the end um, I just asked each of them to say, where did their grandparents come from? And the parents, where, does, where was it? Was it from a, another country or, or that? There was one from Sweden. Molly, if you're watching this, there was one from Sweden. That's where her parents came from. Another one, um, they were missionaries in uh, Siam. So it was a wonderful way of getting to know your friends that you've never, ever talked about. We never have had those conversations before. And we did today, and it was like, wow, you know? Yeah, wow, yeah. So, that's a wonder. I felt honored, I felt blessed, I felt um, loved, and um, it was wonderful. So, just wanted to share that and give you that idea. And also, if you... Uh, I've had a couple that have made a comment on my other ones as far as grandma stories, and I love the, the, the as far as uh, Feather, um, Feather Garden Bell, where she said as far as drinking out of the china cups, and I just think that the wonderful idea to make those china cups, those tea cups, I've got a whole collection of them to make those special. Uh, if they get broken, they get broken, and that's another memory. Uh, you turn it into something else. Um, and then I also love Molly's. I, I did that today with the, the story of her grandmother where where she looked in the mirror or so and she puffed her hair up and she says, I'm not as ugly as I look. And I love that. And I kind of thought that today. Um, and then I thought, oh, you know, it, it was just funny. It was just struck me as funny because we're never we we never really sometimes feel the way we look, and especially as you get older. Because um, I mean, I'm as I said, I'm you know 64. Uh, got my Medicare thing in the mail that said this, you know it's time for me to start looking at Medicare. And my husband said, "You're getting older now." And it's kind of like, mm. so you're never old. That's a secret. Let me let me tell you that that you still remember yourself. Uh, when you're feeling well, okay, <laughs> you're not aching or anything like that, you are still that same um, person you were when you were 30 or 25. The only thing that surprises you is how you look in the mirror because that's changed. Because you, you looked in the mirror a lot more when you were 28, 26 than you do when you're 62. You, d you try not to spend too much time in front of the mirror at that time. But um, I can remember one time coming up to uh, one of those uh, shopping mall things where they had the all glass window. And I <laughs> looked in the, in the mirror and I go, oh, there's a woman that, that has an outfit just like mine. And then it was like, um, that is not somebody else. That's me. So anyway, it's always kind of an interesting thing when you find that out. So anyway, just wanted to share my grandmother's shower Aloha. Just a little quick, yeah, I forgot a couple of things like a little picture frame and a grandma's brag book and this cute three cat uh, uh, bag that's a tote bag and see the little handprints and all the piggy things and my wine and piggy cloth and lavender soap and these are the really cool cat socks. 
Aloha. <laughs>